The Plymouth Brethren are a very caring society and it's very impressive they not only look after themselves but also reach out to the community and touch lives in so many ways and that is very impressive. The Brethren community engages in many activities as part of a commitment to the public good. The Rapid Relief Team, or RRT as it's known, is on call 24-7 to provide emergency workers at major incidents with hot food and refreshments. The RRT provided round-the-clock support after a tragic helicopter crash in Glasgow in November 2013. Andy Bates, Chief Superintendent of Greater Glasgow Police, spoke appreciatively. If you want people to be working what is a fairly uh, monotonous job, maybe standing on a cordon for eight hours, if you can take them away every now and again, keep them warm, give them a cup of tea, give them a bacon roll, then they're going to be go back. And, and it's not only what you've served, it's actually the way you've done it. It's been the smile and face, the welcome, the really, really good reception they've, they've received from you that they've really appreciated. The team is also on hand for natural disasters at both a local and national level. They've rushed They've arranged for pumps, sandbags, um, everything they possibly could do, they've done. They've been with us all after, well, from um, early evening helping, you know, right until now, Christmas Day, and they're still here. Absolutely fantastic. They've made a really devastating situation bearable. The RRT's work in local communities often goes unnoticed. But in March 2013, the BBC reported on their activities after a heavy snowfall in Sussex. If you're stranded in a car deep in snow, you may well say a little prayer in hope of salvation. Possibly without belief it will be answered. But last night, members of the Plymouth Brethren Christian Church descended like a host of fluorescent angels to save scores of people at Handcross Hill near Crawley. And on a more international note, the RRT brought in supplies of drinking water after a devastating hurricane in St. Vincent, West Indies, in December 2013. And I really want to congratulate them and thank them for the massive contribution. There is a strong and generous charitable spirit in the Brethren community. Lord McCall accepted a donation from school students to the Mercy Ships charity. Thank you so much, that is marvellous. I visited several of the schools, of course, and um, it's very impressive how well behaved they are and very polite, and how much they do in collecting money. They collected £6,000 by cleaning cars and helping in various ways and that money will go to, has gone already to Mercy Ships and will do an enormous amount of good, possibly 30 or 40 cataract operations, which we very welcome indeed. I am Dr. Marina Cecilia. I'm a research fellow based at St. Thomas's Hospital and I'm supported by the British Heart Foundation. I would like to say a very big thank you to the Plymouth Brethren Church Congregation. They were the biggest donors and the funds that they raise support young investigators such as myself establish a career in cardiovascular research. Another um, delivery here of oh, 72 you. hygiene packs. Plymouth Brethren Church, thank you so much on behalf of my homeless clients and myself for your generosity and those hygiene packs will make a big impact. Thank you. I'm Andrew, I'm the Leeds Chaplain at HMP Thameside. We're London's newest prison, serving 900 male prisoners mainly on remand. We've got good things going on here and that's been supported by the Plymouth Brethren with the Bibles and tracts that come in. These are freely available to the guys and we've had 18 baptisms in the last 11 months. A young guy, uh, Chris, has told me that uh, his whole family has come to Christ through the life-changing work that's been going on here. We'd like to express our heartfelt um, gratitude and appreciation to the Plymouth Brethren uh, for the incredible donations they made on three flights with us last year, um, raising over £8,200. That is a record-breaking donation for us. We've never seen anything like that before. Um, as I said, that, that generosity of spirit of the Brethren, uh, that money goes straight to, to UNICEF, uh, our Change for Good program for children, working with you know, children un in underdeveloped countries around the world. Um, we, we love having the Brethren on board and we really appreciate uh, everything they do for UNICEF. Nine-year-old Max Bean sustained severe head injuries when he was hit by a bus whilst visiting family in Wiltshire. 
he was airlifted to French Hay Hospital by air ambulance. Max has now made a full recovery and today has come to Filton near Bristol to say thank you to some of the airborne medics that saved his life. Everyone likes the dark visor. Have you found the dark visor yet? Uh, That's the one. Excellent. It's alright, the have lift off. <laughs> <laughs> the brethren have donated £35,000 to help the Great Western Air Ambulance upgrade to a new helicopter. can't tell you how grateful I am for all the support we've had from all of the Plymouth brethren. It's absolutely fantastic. Since the early 1990s, the Brethren have established their own schools. Financed by the Brethren through contributions and fundraising, each school is registered and accredited by the relevant educational authorities. All teaching staff are from outside the Brethren community. But what I found in Brethren schools in particular is this really strong ethos that encourages um, children to reach their full potential, so a professionalism amongst the staff, you know, a real awareness of, of current um, things happening in education. A positive environment means that we can achieve better results and outcomes for our students. The stimulating school environment includes exciting outings and school trips. Competitive sports and fitness are encouraged both inside and outside school. This is the school's inter-region final. We were very tough, we very hard, very competitive. We did manage to crack them with the goal. I've worked with the, with the Brethren School now for the last three or four years. Um, and found them to be very interesting, very motivated and dedicated students. My name's Tim Payton from First Intuition in London. Uh, we have offices in many countries around the world uh, and run courses for a wide variety of university level qualifications. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Tina Joint from the Plymouth Brethren for outstanding achievement in recent SEMA exams, coming first in Ireland and seventh in the world. The Brethren community really does support and encourage their students to achieve high levels of uh, attainment in these qualifications. Over the last 40 years, many Brethren have set up their own businesses. Typically, these are family-owned enterprises employing many from outside the Brethren community. Everything has to be done right. Um, you know, they pay their taxes on time, they pay their bills on time, and once they've given you a commitment, uh, they adhere to it. Blake's employ 50 staff. Half of them are from outside the Brethren community. I started at Blake's when I was 18 years old. Um, I take care of the internal sales here. Um, I'm not a member of the Brethren, but I've, we've got Brethren members of, of the team and we all work really, really well together. It's a really nice place to work. There's, there's roughly about a 50-50 split between Brethren and non-Brethren and we all get on really well working together. So if I recently climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and everyone was really generous in, with a donation, especially Blake's themselves. I've worked in quite a few different jobs um, outside of the community. Um, obviously myself, I'm not brethren, but if any of my friends or family were offered a job working for a company in the community, I would definitely say take it with both hands. Church member Damaris McIntyre has an exciting career at Nursing Hygiene Group. In my role as Group Business Manager, I'm responsible for some of the larger accounts. This involves growing contracts with existing customers as well as prospecting new clients. I have to keep my team focused and two days a week I chair face-to-face -face consultations with buying groups and company directors. To me, this is more than just a job. I love facing the challenge of my career every day. Jake and Hans Browning work hard and play hard. At weekends, they like to get active outdoors with their friends. Yeah, good session today. We do biking every now and again. We try and get out on the weekends just to stretch your legs and try and blow the cobbers out. Jake and Hans live with their parents and two younger brothers in Winchester. Like all young brethren adults, they stay in the family home until they marry. At weekends, the Brownings often invite other brethren families in to share a meal and have a good time. 
This evening, they have been invited to Bill and Sonia Murray's. Hello. Hello, Bill. Church members Bertie and Julia Gear are recently married. Moving from the skyscrapers of New York to the Cotswolds has been an immense change. We first met in 2009 when I was traveling through the States and we met a few more times, half a dozen times actually, and then we tied the knot last year. Many of our friends and relations worldwide have called up wanting to come visit and see the beautiful Cotswolds. It's very exciting for us to have visitors in our new home. I've taught Breda and children for nearly 10 years and I've always found them very motivated, highly enthused and very resilient learners. For example, we have Eddie who's reached grade 7 and a distinction. They are normal children that, that set themselves very high goals, very high targets and strive to be the best that they can be. A party of young church members are on their way to help on a construction project in Kingston, Jamaica. I'm just out here in Jamaica, having a brilliant time with friends, kind of here to work on a community project. I found them very welcoming, very, very warm welcome. It's incredible how you can come across the other side of the world and see you know, other community members and be with them and just completely at home. Elaine and Kaylee enjoy shopping together on a Saturday. Well, I'm, I'm Ian Popel. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon here at French Hospital uh, and was um, on call when Michelle first came in uh, during her first illness here. I can say that uh, from my contacts with the Plymouth Brethren that they do seem to have a very well-developed support system and if every child we saw had the same level of support that was given to the Brethren children, I suspect their road to recovery would be much faster. Church members are encouraged to actively contribute to wider society. These young men entertain old people in a care home. Today, brethren meet in purpose-built churches, which are used only for Christian worship and not for secular or other activities. Well-disposed visitors are welcome. Recently, the mayor of the London Borough of Croydon visited a brethren's gospel hall near her home. After the service, she spoke about her experiences. I, I knew about the sort of amphitheatre style, but I think it really came to life with all the families in it. Yeah, so it was just like a family occasion, really. Um, it was a, a large group. And I think what was quite nice, quite often in a, a traditional church, you only really get one person preaching to you. But in, in this case, you ha there was a lot of interaction. Did you, did you enjoy coming today? I, I did, yes, I liked the meeting. Uh, I liked the fact that you, you know, you've got everybody there. Yeah. Of all ages. Yeah. Yeah. Open days are held at Brethren's Gospel Halls. Hot food and drinks are offered to any who attend, along with a free Bible and Gospel booklets. Brethren preach the Gospel publicly to attract people to Jesus. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Gospel tracts handed out include a phone number for anyone seeking help, guidance, reassurance or solace. I've known the uh, Plymouth Brethren Christian Church uh, for some time now and um, I know that um, they are very faithful to the scriptures, they try to, f to follow the teachings of the Bible. 
They are uh, very upright people, um, good for society. Their teaching, uh, the teaching that they receive uh, in the uh, places of worship leads them uh, not just to be upright, but socially useful uh, or benefit to society in the way they uh, deal honestly in their work uh, with other people. Uh, in the humanitarian work that they do at times of crisis, for instance, or with people in need. Um, and um, if they did not exist in a particular community, then there would be a lack uh, 